Does a state agency require regulation? Today, I'm joined by Kate Faulkner, who is a property analyst and guru of all things property. She's on the BBC, and hey, she's even on the Negotiator magazine. Um, do a state agents need regulation with ROPA? Talk to me. Yes, they do. Simple answer. Uh, and the reason being is that it is unbelievable, and I'll talk about it, for, we often talk about sales, but this is really from a letting side. There are over 400 rules and regulations to let a property. If somebody is not required any qualifications to know those rules and regulations, what happens is we have bad properties coming to market, bad landlords through bad agents that don't make sure that the property is let to tenants legally and safely. And that is a disaster. And the reason why we have to stop bad agents, bad landlords, bad properties coming to the market, particularly in the rental sector, is because once somebody's in them, the time it takes to sort out the problem and the cost is too high. And that's why you can do as much rent reform as you like. You can give tenants as many rights as you want to. We will never fix the market while tenants have very little choice of the properties. They can't just leave a property and head to, head to another one because there's nothing there. So we have to have regulation because we cannot have people that don't know all the rules and regulations. Take, for example, the new Building Safety Act. That has got huge change to the agency market. We can't reach most of the people because they don't watch the news, they don't listen to the updates because they don't have to be qualified. And if the government wants to improve standards through, reg through legal, changing the law, well, then they have to be qualified. Um, Lord Best had his report on ROPA. Um, I know you're not directly, but indirectly, you are involved with the Home Buying and Selling Group. You know, Lord Best has almost gone out of date in terms of, you know, this was years ago. Why has this not come through yet? Do you know what hasn't gone out of date? The, the recommendations that they made, pretty much great for today. And we had another one. So with the Lettings Industry Council, they put forward for agents um, what they thought ROPA should include. And a lot of that is included. But they came out with something that was really interesting. Um, it's no good just regulating agents. You also have to regulate the property. So the idea was we'd have regulation of agents um, and there was a uh, glimpse through and lots from hunters, some amazing people did the work on this, Teresa at Savills, there's loads of people. And they said, you also have to regulate the property through what we developed, which is called the property MOT. And interestingly, on the home buying and selling side, we're now getting towards having that property regulation and understanding with the data of what it's like because we've got property logbooks and the property logbook guys because we all talk to each other now are also incorporating a lot of the, the things that you need to rent a property so the regulation of agents is quite straightforward in terms of how that should be done but we need to match the two because there's no point in regulating agents if you don't regulate the landlord uh, the, the landlord or the property to make okay. sure that we understand it's legally safe, uh, legally and safely let, or in my view, sold. Because I don't see why there should be different rules of safety for a tenant than there are for a homeowner. So okay. if you're buying a home and you're a single mum with three kids, why is it okay to buy one with a boiler that's going to blow up, whereas you can rent one without? Uh, are you able to share any inside knowledge without giving too much away about where, how far this is up the pile of the housing ministers? So in Kate's world, uh, every meeting that I have that is vaguely related to property, there is, I'm sure somebody runs a book on how long it takes me to mention Roper. So in my world, it's the top. If I could say to the government, please scrap the rent reform and please regulate agents, that would be my dream because um, legislatively, I think it will have better impact on more people because the rent reform stuff does what all of the other legislation does, is it protects people after they've moved in. And that's too late and too, costs too much uh, to do. So from 
The problem that we've got now is there is a very short space of time to get anything through legally. So what I think we are going to have to do is, as an industry, what we need is for people to be have to be qualified in some way, shape or form. There's two potential ways that you could do that. Firstly, if you mandate information that has to be available on a property to sell and a property to rent, people are going to have to be trained to know that. Um, and if they're not, it's going to be fairly this obvious. This is your upfront information. Yes, it's going to be fairly obvious because national trading standards now have their material information. And that matches, by the way, the upfront information we're asking Yes, because for. we're on a journey with those, aren't we? We Correct. should we should be getting the next tranche soon, shouldn't yes, we? Yes, yes. Would hopefully. that be the second one or the third one we're getting soon? My understanding is they will be both together. All right. So never say part never. One. So we've had part one, but hopefully we can do B and C together. Um, and a lot of that is because of the fantastic collaboration uh, that's going on. And that work that National Trading Standards are doing is done in tandem with all of the upfront information that we've been requesting. So um, once that's mandated, then people have to have qualifications. Now, here's an interesting thing. Did you know you can't be a beautician unless you're qualified? And do you know why? Because you're dealing with people's health. But why legally or why from running a business perspective does that beautician need to be qualified? Go on, share it, share it with me. Because they can't get professional indemnity insurance without it. So why could we look at something with professional indemnity side that says, actually, um, you have to be qualified because you have to have this information and you have, uh, about a property. Well, therefore, should the professional indemnity guys, could they, is it possible? Love people's feedback on this. You have to, you have, to have these qualifications to be able to um, let or okay. sell properties to get your professional indemnity insurance and therefore that will help drive the standards up. Final the question. A lot of people have said well, um, regulation won't um, drive the uh, rogues out of the industry, out of the estate and letting agency industry, and neither you know, their lack of um, professional indemnity insurance. So it's absolutely true. Regulation is not going to solve everything. You get bad brokers, you get all sorts of people in the regulated industry. But what it does is, firstly, it puts people off. So if they've got to have qualifications, for example. Secondly, what it allows us to do is it allows us to work lots, a lot closer with the media, for example, or with the government guides that we have, uh, which are really good. The buying, selling, the how to rent guide, they're really good guides to get in people's hands. We need a level of consistency. And if we can say to people, these are the top three reasons to, or top three things to check if you're using an agent, that's the way that we will help um, drive rogues out. The way we will help drive rogues out of the bad properties is for tenants, I've always said, are you checking there's a gas safety? Are you checking they've got an EPC? And if they haven't, run a mile. Um, and it allows us, what regulation does is it allows us to take people out of the market because currently we, we can't. And what we need to make sure is that regulation covers all of those reasons why somebody says, understandably, well, the regulation won't make any difference because it won't drive the rogues out. OK, you tell me the 20 reasons why that will happen. And then let's see what we can do with regulation to make sure that uh, the regulation we do covers those issues. And that's how we work. We actually work best and come up with the best solutions when we work with the people who hate the idea. And that's, again, something else that we've learned from the groups that we've run so far. Thank you for your time today. Pleasure.